Well, thank you very much, and uh, welcome to the 14th hour. I'm very excited about this because this reason for hope is actually one of the most important of all, and it's often overlooked. The clean energy revolution embodied in renewable energy technology is making our global energy system safer and more secure. The substitution of traditional energy infrastructure with renewable energy reduces our reliance on fossil fuels, of course, but we often fail to remember that those fossil fuels, particularly oil, are increasingly dangerous to obtain and increasingly expensive. Uh, it's very encouraging uh, as well to see the extreme level of seriousness with which the U.S. military treats the climate crisis. Understanding and adapting to future climate conditions is a vital strategic interest for the armed services of the United States, and many other militaries have come to the same uh, opinion. The U.S. military's ongoing success in utilizing renewable technologies actually now serves as an example of how society as a whole can benefit from the adoption of clean energy systems. So the 14th reason uh, for hope is that people are coming to realize that clean energy saves lives and makes the world more secure. Step back with me just for a moment and think about the national security challenges the U.S. faces and think about the most dangerous ongoing disputes and potential wars, in some cases there's already shooting going on, in the world today. What do you think about? Well, first of all, you think about the Middle East and the Persian Gulf. Any trouble there? Any connection to fossil fuels there? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Now, I don't want to go into ancient history about how this current mess in uh, the Persian Gulf and the Middle East and Iraq and Syria um, and Iran and all of this uh, got started. But one thing that had something to do with it, if you recall, was the decision by the United States uh, in 2002, uh, based on completely false evidence, to invade a country that hadn't attacked us. Now, I, I really do not want to open up that dispute, but I really do want to make an important point. As the evidence comes in from the documents in the White House and the Defense Department and the Office of Vice President uh, in the Bush-Cheney administration, it is unmistakably clear that one of the, the principal reasons, maybe not the only reason, but one of the principal reasons for this falsified rationale to invade Iraq was because of the oil. Now, there were other factors for sure, but making certain that the United States of America and the allies of the United States of America would have continued fair access to the largest deposits of fossil fuel on the planet definitely played a major role in leading my country to making the most horrendous and worst foreign policy national security mistake in the entire history of the United States. So, if we could somehow break our dependence on this dirty and dangerous fossil fuel that is also contributing so mightily to the climate crisis, we will have a safer world. But that's not the end of it. Think about the military's operational challenges. During the war in Afghanistan and the war in Iraq, what was the single most vulnerable choke point for U.S. military forces? It was the fuel convoys. As this uh, Marine sergeant 
uh, well, yeah, this Marine sergeant says, saving fuel for generators by moving to renewable energy cut back on the need for convoys. And that saved lives uh, by creating fewer opportunities for the improvised explosive devices to be buried uh, in the roads and the snipers to ambush these convoys. Here is a, a marine base uh, in the Sangin district of Afghanistan with solar panels. This gunnery sergeant in the U.S. Marine Corps says, hey, Marines can get by on a little food and water, but the time saved on these convoys for fuel, that has really been crucial. So uh, operationally, the military has really taken this seriously. And the U.S. military uh, has reduced its greenhouse gas emissions, reduced its need for oil products in vehicles by 20 percent, very, very impressive, reduced the energy use in buildings, also has reduced uh, water consumption. The military uh, is green in more than one way, uh, and really they have approached it with their characteristic uh, thoroughness uh, and discipline. Every four years there's something called the Quadrennial Defense Review, and it sets out the military strategy for the Pentagon for the coming four years. This is the last one in 2014. <clears throat> the pressures caused by climate change will influence resource competition while placing additional burdens on economics, on economies, societies, and governance institutions around the world. These effects are threat multipliers that will aggravate uh, and they go on conditions that can enable terrorist activity and other forms of violence. The military understands this very clearly, and they have no patience for this phony political debate ginned up by denialists who are funded by carbon polluters and their ideological allies. So the Pentagon says, hey, this is a mission reality. It's not a political debate. They read the science. They're used to doing that when they study new weapon systems, when they study tactics and strategy. They're not going to be fooled by some phony political debate. This is, again, a mission reality. More sea level rise, more Arctic ice melt, more intense storms, more flooding from storm surge, and more drought. It's not that complicated. 97% of all the scientists agree. So, of course, the military that has to plan in a way that will save lives and ensure the success of their missions is going to take this into account. Of course they are. Now, a very high-level Pentagon panel went even further and pointed out that in the past, this was considered a threat multiplier. Now, it is seen as cl the climate crisis as a direct cause of instability. Look at this awful, hellish civil war in Syria. There was a drought in Syria from 2006 to 2010 that caused the loss of 60% of their farms and 80% of their livestock and drove a million refugees from rural areas into the cities where they collided with a million refugees that had been driven there by the uh, ill-considered invasion of Iraq. And the government of Syria in their private documents were saying as long ago as 2008, we can't handle this. The system's gonna break. Everything's gonna explode, and it did. And there were other reasons involved, but the climate crisis was directly involved as a direct cause of instability, and it's not fixed yet. Okay, let's look at one of the other two major sources of instability in the world today. We've just talked about the Middle East and the Persian Gulf and Iraq and Syria and Afghanistan. What about the South China Sea? All of a sudden, we have this very threatening dispute between China and Vietnam, China and Malaysia, China and the Philippines. What's that all about? Hey, well, here's a clue. Here's a Chinese oil drilling platform in the South China Sea. And here are the Vietnamese patrol boats right next to it. The desperate competition over greater oil supplies in the South China Sea, just like in the Persian Gulf region, is one of the principal causes of instability. Let's go to renewable energy and, and get rid of this source 
of instability. It's dirty, it's dangerous, it's leading to conflict. The military has to plan for it. Okay, let's take another example. What is the third source of insecurity and instability in the world today? The Russian slow motion invasion of Ukraine. Why can't it be stopped more effectively? Because parts of Europe are so dependent on natural gas from Russia that they're frightened to raise their voices. They're frightened to really join as effectively as they could in the sanctions that might have a real chance of stopping this. Here is the Russian gas pipeline to the Czech Republic. Here is the Russian, uh, the, one of the main uh, Russian gas pipelines to Europe. Even in places like the Netherlands, they get 40% of their gas from Russia. They are dependent on Russian fossil fuels. And so when the West, and if you'll forgive the phrase that sounds outdated but really isn't, the forces of freedom, we have challenges to our freedom in our own domestic policies, but that's another story. But compared to what Putin is doing, when the forces of the West try to have cohesion to solve this source of uh, strategic instability, the dependence on Russian fossil fuels is one of the reasons for this continued instability. And now with efficiency, uh, uh, Europe could help to solve this problem, cutting their dependence by one third. What about the Arctic? Are we honestly gonna take the technologies of the deep water horizon drill rigs into the Arctic Ocean? That is utter insanity. And yet this desperate dependence on fossil fuels is threatening to ignite a competition in the Arctic Ocean. The Navy uh, is already uh, patrolling there. Hold on here a second. Yeah, the Navy has warned that the progressive melting of the Arctic ice cap by global warming is gonna have a significant impact on the military's capabilities. And these submarines uh, that patrol in the Arctic. So the military is moving to electric vehicles uh, for, uh, in a big way for the non-tactical fleet, and they're planning out the net zero initiative. Again, they're serious. They know how to plan. They know how to execute. They know how to put solar panels on tents and on buildings and on barracks. And this is a huge new PV facility at Fort Carson Army Base in Colorado. Okay, so those are the threats. Those are the problems. But here again is the reason for hope. As we adopt renewable energy, we can free ourselves from many of these threats to our security. And that is the 14th reason for hope.